So the audio is critical and, you know, your audio as a podcaster is booming through and it has a sense of authority, a sense of professionalism, a sense of quality that um, is critical. And it's almost as important now in video as it would be for podcasting that it has been for years. Welcome to today's episode of Influence by Design. I'm your host, Samantha Riley, and today we're going to talk about webinars and specifically how we can make webinars more interactive and even more importantly, more interesting so that our prospects stay engaged and hopefully they buy from us is what we're going for. So I've invited Johnny Byrne to join me today. So thank you for uh, staying up late, Johnny. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Samantha. I'm missing out on my beauty sleep and you can see that I need as much of it as I can get. So <laughs> I'm, I'm making an exception just for you. Well, thank you. We appreciate it. It's very late where you are and I very early where I am, but that's, I guess, the, the beauty of being in a global world. We can still catch up even though both of us have got our eyes hanging out of our head. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's all good. I appreciate you, you and, and the time for this. So let's why don't you share a little bit about what it is that you do and the kind of people that you work with? Because I think that'll give us a little bit of context around today's topic. Absolutely. Yeah. So I guess the main thing that I do is I help people address the elephant in the room and mm -hmm. the elephant in the room really is where 60% of webinar attendees leave before the end because of attention deficit, distraction, and sheer boredom with death by PowerPoint. So what I help webinars and subject matter experts who deliver webinars and speakers, trainers, authors and coaches who go on camera a lot, I help them to avoid death by PowerPoint and boring the pants off people where they don't stay for that offer at the end. And if they're not there for the offer, then they're not going to buy, you know, because they haven't seen the offer. So let's increase the chances um reduce that 60 percent of those who leave so at least they'll see the offer right and uh, if they see the offer at least we're in with a chance that they may take us up on that invitation to take up on the offer so that's what i help people to do it's really using uh, an age-old technique at this stage called pattern interrupt where you basically seamlessly transition into your slides without breaking eye contact without even um having to share your screen and for your listeners what i'm doing there is actually appearing as if i'm part of the presentation without actually having to reach for my mouse and share the screen and that's really what i teach is pattern interrupt it's quite popular in nlp psychotherapy and psychology you may remember as a as a child samantha if you were crying and your parents give you a lollipop or you might do it now with with your kids and then I know I do it mine look at the doggy outside the window that's pattern interrupt right and suddenly they go from one state to another and that's really what we're teaching here mm. and if you are listening I do recommend that you go and uh, head over to the show notes page at influencedbydesignpodcast.com and actually have a look at the video that we've got up there because an elephant really did actually just join us in the room it wasn't just a matter of of speech there <laughs> We were yeah, joined by yeah. an elephant. Exactly. So you talk about death by PowerPoint and we all know what that feels like. It's, you know, when, when you're in a conference room, it's bad enough. You know, when you have to start, when you start fiddling with your pen or your phone, but let's face it, we're giving webinars where people are in their home office, they don't start fiddling. They just leave. So I guess this is such a big question and i'm sure you're the expert here and you'll start to break it down but how do we start to avoid death by powerpoint what are the things to avoid and what are the things that we can do to overcome that yeah so it's said that when we're on stage or when we're speaking in public the key is to maintain attention and then when we're online it's to avoid people being distracted and that's what we are talking about there. They're only inches from their phone or they're watching online and they could have Facebook open in another tab. So really what we're looking to do 
first and foremost is really deliver in our webinars really valuable quick win educational information and then along with that on top of that what we do is we break pattern so rather than welcoming people full screen and then going to a presentation where particularly in zoom and indeed in go to webinar and other platforms we kind of disappear up into the corner and then it's slide after slide what i'm doing here is without even breaking eye contact i'm moving into the slides okay i'm transitioning into the slides where i can continue to present okay so i'm presenting the slides i'm part of the presentation as if I was on stage with a big screen behind me, like you'd often see in a TED talk. And then again, without breaking eye contact, I can disappear and continue to present. Again, no messing around with a mouse sharing the screen, which makes us look unprofessional and unprepared, particularly when it doesn't work or it takes too long to happen. Then we might reappear somewhere else and continue to present our presentation. So really what we're doing to the viewer's brain, rather than just slide after slide, even though the, there's something different on the slide, people are climatized, particularly because of COVID, after watching so many Zoom meetings and webinars, they're climatized to just a slide changing to another slide. So what we're doing here is we're adding to that. Their brain is going, hold on a second, he was over there a minute ago, Mm. or there's actually an elephant in the room or um let's say i don't know i actually walk by my own ah. window so you know it's so, actually really funny <laughs> yeah so it is edu it's 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 kind of um edutainment as they say so mm. and it's not it's not to distract so much that they're losing sight of the message or they're missing out on on the message all of the things that i show are used in context. So um, like me walking by my own window live is an example of an exaggerated example almost of pattern interrupt. But if we're talking about the offer, um, you know, you can go to your newsroom or the offer is going to bring in some money and literally money falls out of the sky live as you're presenting. Again, all of these things are adding to the overall um, education and entertainment and getting a little bit of a laugh and as as people say if people are laughing they're learning the other thing you can do is bring in a little bit of b-roll or footage as we call it b-roll where they've a, 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 like a three second clip rather than a static image on a slide really draws people in so mm -hmm. i would say something like is this how you imagine yourself before your first webinar? Is this how you imagine yourself setting up your own studio? And people say to me, that looks exactly like me. They can relate and we're empathizing. So it's really a combination of those couple of things. The other thing we can do is we can, um, if I just open it up here, we can open up a whiteboard. And you know, if we feel for whatever reason that this would make sense during our presentation, we can start to draw out stuff a plus b equals whatever and we can appear in the whiteboard and say hey is this making sense they're like yeah absolutely keep going and like cool so that's it's just another example um if we change camera if i show people behind the scenes let's say in in a live presentation or i want to go to this other camera to show people the green screen changing camera angles is another form of pattern interrupt mm -hmm. so there are a few there are a few very simple ones. I use a couple of cameras to show people behind the scenes. Typically in a webinar, one camera is fine. But this one camera and this camera is the same camera. Or this mm -hmm. scene and this scene, as I should say, is the same camera. So it's really about just mixing it up without it being too busy or too distracting from the main message of the webinar. Um, they're, the, they're the main things. And then it's just not PowerPoint anymore. Totally. And when you actually flicked into that screen where you were showing the your uh, like sort of the behind the scenes, the thought that I immediately get is now we're not just talking face to face, but it almost feels like we've got more connection. It's more intimate because we can actually see behind the scenes of what you're doing and it completely changes 
you know, it's like I feel like I know you more than just seeing mm. your face on the camera. Yeah, absolutely. So we're basically welcoming people into our office. We're even if it if if I didn't do what I do, I would probably do another angle with the camera just to show a little bit of the less polished, a little bit more vulnerable. And it's not for everybody that would want to do that. Would you where you would see very polished webinars and yet they would show a second camera to say hey i'm a real person just like you and mm. just because i for the first 10 minutes it, it was very polished and almost tv like you know i i i'm a real person just like you and there's there's times that works really really well and especially for me of course when i can show people behind the scenes but it is it is that open door policy that fly on the wall hey come and see inside my my office or my house, you're welcome to see it. I've nothing to hide. Mm. Um, and that kind of builds rapport quite, quite well as well. So yeah. Yeah. And relatability. All of a sudden it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. I can do that. I love that. Yeah. 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 Cause I want to show people as well, Samantha, that it's achievable. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want people to look at this production and say, ah, oh, it's easy for you, Johnny, you know, you've got it all figured out. I'm like, well, first of all, it wasn't always like this. I look back at videos and they make me cry and laugh at the same time. <laughs> I'm kind of this, I'm this like bluey color and you can barely make me out. And the, the audio is terrible. And I kind of um, joke about, I look like something in a witness protection program. Um, so, but you gotta, as Les Brown would say, you don't have to be great to get going, but you have to get going to be great. So showing people that I haven't got a lot of space. The equipment isn't that expensive. Um, I got a little switch on my desk that with the right software, you can get going pretty quickly with the right guidance and setup. So yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So let's talk about the setup because you did mention, oh, Johnny, but it's different for you. And you know, we, we hear that all the time as experts, mm. you know, but it's different for you. People are making up all these stories. A, what is this, the cost that we're looking for to set that up? Yeah, so the first thing I always say to people is you don't need everything that I have unless you do what I do. And if you do, you wouldn't be watching this, okay? So I have what I have because it grew organically over time based on my budget and the availability of new gear. Um, but I kept everything to reuse where possible and to show people different options based on the size of their room and the size of their budget. But we're talking about hundreds of dollars, not thousands. Um, definitely when you're starting out a reasonably good webcam, um, 100, 200, 300 dollars, whatever you can afford. Typically, the more you spend within reason, the better they actually are. Mm -hmm. So we, the, the go to is the Logic, Logitech C920. Um, after that, maybe the Brio, after that, maybe the new Elgato Facecam Pro at about 350 is almost as good as a DSLR. Um, the um, Insta360 that, ha that will move with you is a fantastic webcam for about 350. Um, quality, quality, but you'd be surprised. I mean, if you only had $300, I would spend a hundred on a webcam and 200 on lights rather than the other way around. Yes. Yeah. 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 Cause lighting is, and again, for, for, for your audio, um, audience, uh, pop over to the video because I just turned off my lights and you just see like, again, this is the witness protection look that a lot mm -hmm. of people are, you know, you can, it's like, you're on a, you're on some sort of crime show and you can't show your face. So, I mean, even to turn on one light um, makes a massive difference. Um, doesn't make me any better looking, but it, it definitely makes me more um, visual. So I underestimated the importance of lights for a long time. Um, so that, that would be my, my, my go-to would be if you have 300, spend 200 on lights and 100 on the camera the other way around. No camera within reason, unless you spend an absolute fortune, is going to create light. So you need to create light and then the camera will find it easier. Um, so in the low hundreds, microphone, again, your kind of go-tos that are quite popular 
are your Snowball, your Blue Yeti, um, some USB mics, the Elgato Wave 3. Personally, I go for a shotgun microphone that's attached to my teleprompter, so it's not on the desk. I'm not going to hit it over. I don't have to wire myself up. There's no batteries required or any of that. So if budget allows, I would go for a shotgun microphone. So the Rode Go 2 starts at about $100. You can go into thousands if you wish. Um, any Rode shotgun within reason for $100, $200, $300 is going to be a great microphone. It, it reduces echo by default. The reason it's called a shotgun, it's directional. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a brand, it's just a category of microphone. Um, and don't, again, underestimate the importance of audio. In fact, you could leave your camera. If your camera broke, people would stay on to hear you. If your microphone broke or was breaking up like a bad cell phone signal, they would just tune out. Mm -hmm. Okay, So it's one thing if they can't see you, they'll forgive you almost for going, okay, his camera's gone a bit, whatever. But if they can't hear you, there's no point in being able to see you. So the audio is critical and, you know, your audio as a podcaster is booming through and it has a sense of authority, a sense of professionalism, a sense of quality that um, is critical. And it's almost as important now in video as it would be for podcasting that it has been for years. Mm. I love that you mentioned the authority piece because when someone shows up and you can't hear them properly or you can't see them properly the first people don't even realize they're thinking it but they're thinking oh this person's amateur or maybe they don't know what they're talking about and i think that that's really important to bring out in the open and and say people actually won't take you seriously if you don't have a professional setup exactly and you know the same what you see is what you get so if people don't like what they see they presume they won't like what they get. I mean, this is the shop window, whether it's fair or not. You know, mm. we, we have no control over that. And maybe back in the early days of COVID, oh, sure, the poor fellas working from home and it's it's grand, you know, and maybe he didn't get any equipment or we'll forgive him. And then after a couple of weeks of COVID and working from home being the norm and people actually investing and starting to look good. People very quickly started to see Samantha what good looked like and therefore forgiveness went out the window. It's, hey, mm -hmm. look, you know, make an effort here. And I've turned up at sales meeting where sales meetings where people were presenting softer that could be five, ten thousand dollars and they show up and I'm like, dude, like based on what I see, rightly or wrongly, and I don't mean to judge, but if your software is anything like what I see right now, I ain't buying. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's peop people, it's the shop window and perception is reality. And it, I think it's disrespectful, to be honest, mm -hmm. not to show up in a way that you would offline. I mean, you wouldn't show up with your lunch all over your face, you know, yeah. offline. So metaphorically, why would you do something that's unprofessional online? And I get that. I mean, people make the excuse, ah, oh, it's expensive and technical. And I would say there's a technical element to it, but it's a lot easier than you think. And hey, it can be learned. Mm -hmm. And your reputation is on the line. Your business is on the line. Your income is on the line. Your profit is on the line. What people say about you is on the line. So for the sake of a couple of hundred dollars and some some uh, training, I don't think we have an excuse and it ain't going away. So, no. you know, if anything, it's become more, <laughs> there's more of it um, than ever before. So we, we, we got to embrace it, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you talked about the kinds of technology that we can use. Let's talk about the space that we need because sure um, you, you know some people were like well actually i don't have the space or i don't know how to set it up so what sort of area do we need to have aside for this setup yeah so ideally what i would say to people if standing is an option is to stand up put their arms out and do kind of a wonder woman twirl <laughs> and that's kind of the, the roughly the space you need um, I mean, there's a few additional pieces that you could look at in terms of equipment. 
Um, but ideally, yeah, you'd be looking at to be comfortable, you would be looking at about three meters square. Now I work in a smaller space in the corner of my living room with a pull up green screen, which is the distance between the green screen and the wall, not my desk, but the actual wall is two meters. Um, mm -hmm. So about two meters square for sitting and presenting with it, with a pull up green screen. So you don't need a lot of space. You could set up a, a nice, beautiful background like you have, or if that's not an option for people, get the pull up green screen. Just stay far enough away from the green screen that you're not casting a shadow on it and ideally be in control of the lighting on the green screen. Otherwise, you're going to have trouble. But excuse me, green screens are optional. I mean, if you want the full immersive experience, you need a green screen. But there are ways to immerse yourself in the slide in a circle where people can see your background, but you're still transitioning nicely into the slide. So you don't really... Uh, need a lot of space just don't feel confined because you won't present um it's like if you were put on a very 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 small stage you'd be like i can't really so you you do need a little bit of freedom but nothing like what people like if i hit this button here you know i can just about reach the green screen i can just about reach the camera so arm, arms out and, and and that's a rough rule of thumb really totally totally now i know that you have a free resource that you can share with our audience i'd love you to tell us a little bit about what that is yeah so the free resource is called presentation presentation transformation and it basically in about 10 12 pages with some diagrams it takes people through a lot of what we talked about um some hints about the equipment and some links to the the go-to equipment that i would suggest i'm not saying you throw out what you have just and buy what i say use what you have if you get the desired result it talks about pattern interrupt and slide design as well but more recently i added an interactive version so you can read it you can download the full pdf or you can read it online and ask questions so I will get an alert if you ask a question and I will answer. So the, there's an interactive version of it, which means you can ask the author and uh, we can answer some specific questions as well. We have an equipment list um, of everything that I have. As I said, nobody needs everything that I have. But if you like what you see and you want to look at different options, you can get all the Amazon or different supplier links in one spreadsheet as well. So there's the couple of resources that uh, that I have prepared, and I'm glad to share them with your with your viewers and your listeners. Absolutely. So head over to influencedbydesignpodcast.com and get a copy of those free resources. Johnny, I would love you to share some or a case study of someone that was running webinars before and how did their um i guess show up rate engagement um conversions change once they change to this system because i mean that's really sure. what it's all about right yeah so the show up rate um improves where you do a better um registration page video so if you have a video on your webinar registration page you can definitely look more professional by using this system. Um, for some people, they don't have a video on the registration page, and that's fine. So the viewer only starts to see how professional it is when they join the webinar. So what we've helped people to do is reduce the 60%. So the industry average of people leaving before the end is 60%. We have helped people get that down to 50, 40%. So then their conversions go up, sometimes a percent or two, sometimes three, four, 5%, because there are more people there. And they're getting better at it now, and they're bringing in, now that they can see what's possible with, as the example, the elephant in the room or whatever it might be, they're starting to think, what else can I do with this? And they, they might reach out to me, they come up with their own ideas. But the, the, the big feedback is that the viewer kind of says, look, this is, this is better than I've seen most webinars done, okay? Because if you're 
viewers and your listeners take this on now, they will still be better than 90% of webinars that are going on at the moment. So that's the sort of feedback they're getting. And the feedback I get personally from my clients and students is it's so much fun. It's so enjoyable. It's so effortless with a bit of, with a bit of practice. It's like no more sharing screen. And that enjoyment comes across to the audience, which comes back to the presenter, which goes back. To, so there's this kind of new dance of we're all having a good time here. So it's definitely put more money in people's pockets because more people stay to the end. Therefore, more people saw the offer and more people bought the offer. Mm. And they're, they're growing it and growing it and growing it from there. And the great thing about the setup as well is that you can use it for making courses. You can use it for speaking at summits. You can use it for being on a video podcast. You can, you know, really helps you make courses faster as well. If you're in online courses, if you wanted to jump on a LinkedIn live or any other live stream platform, you can use it for that as well. It'll work anywhere you turn on your camera. People ask me, oh, does it work on Zoom, go to webinar, StreamYard, Google Meet, Google Hangout, anywhere you turn on the camera, Microsoft Teams, it works with all of them. Mm, love that so much. And can I just say for someone that hasn't shared a screen for a couple of years now, because I do have the tech to transition, not only yeah. is it more seamless, it makes me more confident because I'm not thinking about something else. But also for the viewer, it's just it happens. We don't have to sit there and wait while someone hits a button. So it, I just love it. Not sharing screens is awesome. Yeah, it really, really is. Yeah. yeah. Johnny, thanks so much for coming and sharing your genius with us today. We really appreciate it. It's been my pleasure, Samantha. Thank you very much.